pictures in a video? I never intended to make a video, but too many people ask too often, how did I build this or that? Here's a quick snapshot of the end result of this video, what we're working towards. It turned out to be pretty much what I had in mind. I try to plan things out, God's laugh, and I try to do my best to get things done. Designing and building an ultra-small bathroom is all about leg room, knee room to be exact. Not enough knee room and you'll be pissed. Unfortunately, the business hole is fixed. I can't move it farther back. Drilling through 150 millimeters of concrete to make another hole and line up the sewage plumbing is not an issue. Instead, just behind the existing hole is a support beam. Having to move things past that would bring things back way too far. Moving the door frame, on the other hand, forward is not an option. It would mean sacrificing part of the already tight hallway area. The way forward is pushing back the reservoir to its very last millimeter. The use of thinner covering boards that have relief cutouts for the plumbing to snug up against. Then a thin layer of plaster. That'll be the plan. Plasterboard, drywall, Gimson board, sheetrock. Many names for the same thing. This type is green, which indicates some level of moisture resistance. I added a window frame for frosted glass above the door. The idea is to allow natural light into the area, as well as indicate to others when in use when the light is on. I plastered the existing wall before building the outer wall. Using a 5-foot straight edge and other plastering tools would otherwise be too cumbersome in such a tight space. With the walls plastered with gypsum, I tiled just one wall. I used Turkish travertine. Travertine is a form of limestone. Typically, people select the polished Roman travertine. But the Turkish travertine has a rough matte surface that views much more natural. I have to hold myself back not using it everywhere. Aerated concrete. That's what I use to build the wall. Working with this material is dusty and it breaks easily. But it provides good heat and sound insulation. And it gives that robust brick and mortar feel. Drywall construction would just give that paper mache feel. Notice the corner bead on the wall? Important to get that absolutely plumb and true. Galvanized steel is fine indoors. But within a bathroom or outside the house, I use plastic or stainless steel. Flushing the electrics and plumbing into the walls is easy. But finding out where they need to go takes time. The light switch needs to be intuitively located. At the same time, building code to restrict placement over wet areas like the faucet. I placed it behind the sink as I had already tiled the other wall. The floor heating uses plastic profile tiles. You place the tubing into them to hold in place. And then a self-leveling compound is poured over to fix it. The sides against the walls are separated by a thin foam of sorts to accommodate thermal expansion. It would otherwise push up against the walls, which can lead to cracks and buckling of the floor. The lower sections of the tiled walls received a highly penetrable, low-viscosity epoxy coating. A final white coat of polyurethane with a satin finish is applied. Walls are wiped off easy clean. The upper sections get a coat of water or moisture-resistant paint. This type won't peel easily. It's called Caripol Amphibie. It does not trap moisture and allows the area to breathe. For the floor I used Natural Stone Star Galaxy. Being highly polished makes it easy to clean. It captures, translates, and stores the heat from the floor heating very well. So what's with this house? Why all the tight space? Well, this is northwestern Europe. It has one of the highest population densities in the world. To make matters more complex, it also has the tallest people. Average height's about 183 centimeters or 6 feet.